So recently, I reported on Pastor Alistair Begg and how he made comments to a grandmother that had asked him the question of whether or not, you know, she should attend her grandson's LGBT wedding. And to the surprise of not just the grandmother, but many others, Pastor Alistair Begg had told her, not only do I think that you should attend the wedding, but I think you should bring a gift as well. You know, as long as the grandson understands that, you know, you love Jesus and your position on this is, you know, maybe not, you know, affirming of what the grandson is doing. I still think that you should go to the wedding anyway and, and bring him a gift because it, if you do, then it'll show that you're not being judgmental, that you're not being critical and that, you know, you won't fall into that bracket that all the other Christians do that get lumped into this when they don't go ahead and participate in something like this. And look, I broke this apart on another video. You can go back on my channel and check that out. We're having a, a good discussion over there about it. But now, now we have reports that, well, other certain LGBT behavior has been going on at Parkside Church. And well... It looks as though they don't really want to talk about it. We'll get into it in just a second. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you on the news of the end times and so much more. Thanks for spending part of your day with me today, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, well, it's kind of my only option. I remind you guys as well, if you enjoy and appreciate the work I do here, why not consider blessing my ministry with a generous donation? I could really use your help. There's a couple of ways you could do it. One easy way, just click that super thanks button down below on this video here. That's how you can tip me with a one-time donation of any amount. Whatever you can contribute, it helps and adds up. Doesn't matter how small or how big. Or become a premium member of Not By Sight News. You can join my Patreon today for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash Not By Sight News, link in the description. When you join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit my main YT platform. I always take care of the Patreon members first. You guys also get exclusive links to these topics that we discuss, and I include them on Patreon now just because of the way things are getting on YT. I can't take chances of putting certain links in there they don't like, so it'll be for you on Patreon, but also there you can comment censorship-free on all videos, and you can even send me DMs. So check it out again. It's patreon.com slash news. Link in the description. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, if you missed the clip of Alistair Begg talking about, you know, the LGBT weddings and all that. I'll have a link on my Patreon where you guys can go ahead and check that out, uh, the clip of him saying that. It'll be up for you. It's up there right now. So go ahead and check it out. And remember, if you're already a part of the Patreon, you're already getting all this info before anybody else on YT does. But I want to highlight now, because I broke down the comments of Begg, you know, and, and I gave all my thoughts about that on, on a previous video. But now... New information has brought forth, been brought forth, and I have to thank because this came from uh, a user that had uh, commented on the previous video that I did about Beg, who shared a story about how recently their family had attended Parkside Church. This is this is extremely important because it is really going to, to highlight now, you know, why Beg made the comments that he did. Because trust me, I, I've seen all these people come out and defend him, saying that oh, this is somebody that was. Such a solid teacher, he's so respected. Look at everything that he has said before in the past. As if to say, somehow, the guy starts slipping on sound doctrine, but yet we should still praise him and not, you know, dare to confront him on, you know, false doctrine because of his past. I'm, I'm sorry, that's just not the way that it works. The Bible talks about how there would be a great falling away in the last days. And what does that mean? Falling away from sound doctrine. The Bible even talks about how, you know, Sound doctrine will be rejected in favor of the doctrine of demons, which is a bunch of lies. Doctrine, you start listening to demons, ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to lies. This is what is happening with so many Christians today. Now, this individual informed me that, again, recently their family had attended Parkside Church, and they have a son who is in the junior high level, and he went ahead and attended the junior high youth group. Now, upon being in the youth group, well, the boy was very surprised to find that two other boys in the youth group were engaged in a little lip-locking action. Kid you not. That's what they're telling you. Right there in the youth group, they said that not only 
was their son shocked by this, but it caught the attention of pretty much everybody else in the youth group as well. That these two were just blatantly doing this right in front of everybody else in the youth group, right? The youth pastor seemingly tried to ignore it, pretend that he didn't even see that it had happened. And, you know, to really, you know, take this to the next step, uh, the individual had went ahead and called the church, you know, within a few days after this and, you know, reported the church, look, this is what my son saw. And not only did he see it, but most everybody else in the youth group saw it too. So you can go ahead and, you know, corroborate that with, you know, with other members that were in the class at the time. And, you know, the youth pastor just didn't say anything about it at all. Now, the church responded by saying that the youth pastor, I don't know his name, the youth pastor had informed them that uh, he heard some talk about this, but again, he never saw it happen. So therefore, he just wasn't going to say anything about it, wasn't going to talk about it at all. He also said that while on the phone with the church, that Parkside informed him that they do not in any way affirm the LGBT lifestyle. But in light of this report coming out, what they decided to do, just sweep it under the rug. Now, now here's my here's my thing, and I have more on this, more information about this in a second. Here's my thing. If, if in fact, you know, he says that his son saw this and all these other individuals in the class saw it too. The youth pastor is saying he didn't see it, which I don't believe. Shouldn't you make a statement that that type of behavior will not be tolerated in the youth group? Even if, even if you didn't see it, some sort of a statement should be made that says, look, you can't be doing look. This is a place where we're learning about the Lord, right? You know, we're trying to, you know, raise up these young people and this, you know, this next generation and all of that. You ain't going to be doing that lip locking in my class, right? But that's not what the youth pastor did. And then after the phone call was over and again, seemingly Parkside wanted to just forget that this whole thing ever happened. The individual that reported this said that they talked to a friend of theirs who also used to attend Parkside and then informed them that this is the sort of thing that Parkside likes to do. They like to sweep incidents like this under the rug because they do not like confrontation on controversial topics. Now that leads me to believe that this incident in the youth group was not maybe the only time that something like this happened. Now whether or not there was another incident in the youth group or just, you know, in the main church itself, we don't know. But it appears as though Parkside has been confronted on other issues like this in the past. And so I tie it all back again with Alistair Begg's comments to the grandmother about how you should attend the wedding and bring a gift because as long as your grandson knows your position, that you love Jesus, and that this might not sit well with you, it's better that you don't appear critical or judgmental and that you should just go ahead and attend the wedding anyway. And then I love what some people have been bringing up because this is something that, that that's such a good point. That if the grandmother was to attend and you know if they do the part in the wedding who knows if they even if they even would but if they do the part in the wedding where they say you know if, if anybody here sees any reason why these two should not be well let them speak now or forever hold their peace. You know, it, wouldn't it be the point at then where you would have to stand up and give her, not only give a reason, you could pull your Bible out and start quoting scripture. Can you imagine that at the wedding? Well, I guess that would be kind of a funny thing if a family member did attend an LGBT wedding, but they did it only for the sole purpose to go ahead and read the scripture at that point, which I'm sure would just completely, uh, you, know, you know, bring down that wedding altogether if that was the case. But I, it's just that, we're seeing this more and more, this compromise in these last days. And it's all its all prophecy. It's all supposed to happen. People are shocked. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't put my faith and trust in man. It is sad when you see them fall, but we should always put our faith and trust in Jesus. Because man is never, you know, it, man was going to let us down. Jesus never will. The Bible is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't change. So, again, you know, with this new report now of this sort of thing happening in Parkside, it really all makes sense. 
that you know, even if it's just it's just a small amount of compromise, right? Oh, they don't want to talk about it. It's too con- too confrontational, too controversial. You know, the, the two the two dudes in the in the youth group doing a little lip locking action. Yeah, the youth pastor. You know, I don't see it. I, I don't know. Someone said something about it, but you know, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Maybe you should talk about it. Maybe you should talk about it. But I want to hear from you on this. You guys can chime in with your thoughts down below and you know I welcome your thoughts too if you're somebody that currently attends Parkside or you have in the past you're welcome to chime in on this down below what I want to do right now something I do on all these videos and that's end this video on hope it's part of my ministry outreach of course I talk about the end time Bible prophecy headlines keep you guys up to speed and everything else going on I do it because yes we're in the last days really the final hours and Christ is coming soon for anybody watching right now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin, which means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away, and the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God, You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Don't forget, the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash news. link in the description. Or just hit that super thanks button down below on this video here where you can tip me with a one-time donation. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.